welcome to day two of our daily yoga practice challenge, <laughs> our five-day daily challenge, our free five-day challenge. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, everyone. It's day two, and I'm super, super excited today. Uh, one, to see how many people are already posting about how they've done their practice for today. That's amazing. Congratulations. Way to go. Here we go. We're going to keep on going. Um, and today, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, concentration. And, and being able to pay attention when you're on the mat and what to be paying attention to uh, and how to eliminate distractions. So this seems to be a hot topic that a lot of people talk about it, conscious or not conscious. A lot of times we can be distracted by things in our environment. Uh, if you have pets or kids or a partner, if there's other things happening in your household, kind of like in a nonstop basis, it feels like, or maybe, nothing is happening in your house and then all of a sudden you land on your mat and everyone in the home finds their way to you um, i've been in these scenarios for a long time i have two kids the oldest is eight and a half and i have been a yogi all the time that that um, i've had my two kids and i can tell you that there were so many times in which it was really challenging to be able to show up and just have some personal space uh, sometimes when you show up on the mat and you have pets or dogs, especially dogs, seem to love uh, really getting right up in your face. And so they'll like, as soon as you get on the mat, suddenly they're right there with you and they're wanting to be on you. And it can be really hard to just get through a flow and, and continue to show up. I also have a dog and he loves being right next to me when I'm trying to move on the mat. So with all that, what can we do to improve concentration um, and, and eliminate distractions or work with the distractions that we've got if they can't be eliminated and create a, a space and environment that allows you to get into your practice and just be a little bit more present and able to focus on the instruction, what's happening and all of that. So let's take a breath together first. I feel like sometimes I jump right into these things and uh, breath is something that's important and it's um, so nourishing for the body and the being. So let's take a breath together. And you can continue to keep your eyes closed and just kind of tune into your body right now because what I would love for you to do is to just become kind of present to the environment around you. So I'm gonna open my eyes so that you can see me, but if you could keep your eyes closed. And um, as you're tuning into the environment, you can just become more present and aware to the sounds of your own breath. Maybe the sounds happening in the environment around you. Maybe it's birds. Maybe it's electronics. Maybe it's other members of your household on um, conference calls or phone calls. Maybe it's food cooking in the other room. Maybe the biggest distraction is kind of like all the thoughts running through your mind, right? And so whatever those distractions are, whatever those things are that are kind of pulling you outside of this moment in this present moment as best you can. Try to offer yourself a little bit of space. I like to have this visual where um, I kind of put myself in this little bubble. I imagine myself in a bubble, a small bubble that just fits me. And then I, I try to like imagine just breathing a little bit of space to like make the bubble just a little bit bigger, expand the bubble a little bit. So let's take just a couple of breaths and um, try to expand the bubble. And so as we expand the bubble, bubble, you can imagine just offering a little bit more buffer between you and whatever is around your environment. And then if you can, as thoughts come up about your environment, a lot of us have judgments about our environment, judgments about um, it not being perfect or things being disorganized or a little awkward. And we can just kind of throw all those thoughts outside the bubble. 
So you can imagine just throwing them outside the bubble. And so inside this bubble, inside this space that we have together where we are individually and yet collectively connected, um, we can kind of now tune into the internal environment. And so this is the place where we begin our yoga practice. It's from this more internal space. And I will, as I, as I can, I'm going to put a note for myself to give you a little mini meditation that you can do on creating your personal bubble. Um, because I think if you have the time and you're feeling that lack of concentration, it might be nice to be able to do that exercise even for just like two minutes before you start practice. So I will make that, that note, creating personal bubble, and I will get that to you as soon as I can. And so with that, I want to talk a little bit about the strategies that I use and the different distractions that are in my environment. If you have distractions in your environment, if you have distractions in your mind, um, if you have, you know, like feel like you kind of are getting pulled in multiple directions, please comment and tell me what your distractions are. Um, I'm always super curious because it's different for all of us. Uh, but there are moments, so many moments when we can feel like it, it like the attention is pulled. Um, and when we're able to to bring attention back inward, um, the practice is just that much more uh, potent and strong and connected. So one of the, let's see, how am I gonna start this? So I'll say distraction number one for me, number one is always my kids. If they're around, and they could be on screens on different parts of the house. It doesn't matter where I roll out my mat. I could be in their room. I could be in my room. I could be upstairs. I could be downstairs. I could be in the same room as them. It seems as though there is this energy around every time I roll out my mat. Even today, they're all of a sudden, the kids need me. The kids want to be around me. The cat wants me, the dog wants me, and it can feel really frustrating, especially when I'm trying to get to a live class and participate in a live class. All of a sudden, everybody kind of like descends upon me. And so one of the strategies I've employed is first, um, I spend, when I'm getting ready to go on to my yoga mat, I will make sure, I'll kind of like tidy around the house. What are the things that might come up, that might crop up, and I kind of like predict ahead. Who's going to need me right now and what are they going to ask for? And so I'll make sure that my son has his water, his food, whatever it is that he might need assistance with. I'll make sure that my daughter is, you know, entertained, happy. Do you need anything? And just asking the do you need anything and their response seems to help to buffer the, the distraction that comes. Um, I'll also check in with my partner and I will say to him, I'm going to go on my mat now. I'm going to be 15 to 20 minutes. Like, just give me some time. And he's like, got it. So we have a good strategy now. And a lot of it has to do with just communicating and <laughs> saying up front, I'm going to be doing this thing. Or I won't tell my kids that, but I will tell my partner. Um, Is there anything that you need from me? Because I'm going to go do this thing now. And it's really important to me. Uh, and I do find that that has helped a lot with people kind of descending upon me and suddenly needing me. I also kind of set in my mind, I'm going to get on my mat for 15 minutes. I'm going to enjoy this time for myself. And for some reason, when I kind of set my mind on an easy practice where it's distraction free, those, it does tend to happen more. Um, this could just be, you know, coincidence, but I do feel like if I can get around giving myself an intention for ease and simplicity and distraction free, it tends to happen. Now in different parts of the day, our family has different cadences and it can be a little bit unpredictable. And so often whether I'm home alone or I'm with people, I tend to use headphones. And that actually helps me in a lot of ways. Um, also it helps me with the distraction and like the thoughts that are running through my mind. Like when I am just kind of in my head a lot, I'm thinking about a lot of things. I'm just not, you know, like I'm, I'm a little distracted. I'm kind of getting pulled in multiple directions. When I put my headphones on, I can really let the world melt away. And so whether I'm doing a yoga practice or I'm just, you know, um, throwing, popping in my earbuds, uh, I seem to be able to concentrate much better. And so for me, 
if that means me doing a live class and I've got my wireless earbuds in and somebody needs something from me, I will go and get them water. I'm still listening to class. My attention is still there. And the second that I can get back on the mat, I'm there. Um, and that has helped me a great deal. Um, especially, I feel like if I'm, I'm constantly rolling out my mat in different parts of the house, I'm like, where can I get to where I can be alone uh, and distraction free as much as possible. And so because I'm this like, traveling yogi, uh, I do find that there's like a certain relationship that we have with the environment around us. And when you're able to, um, I don't know, kind of like make the environment inside, it helps a great deal. And so I'll show you the earbuds that I have. Let's see if I have the container here. So these are like my cheapy ones. They were, I want to say $25 and it's because I got the, this color. <laughs> I think you get them for like 20 on Amazon. Um, they are wireless. They do pretty well with um, with most devices, and um, I, I like them as a backup because as I use them, I use my other set a lot for teaching. I wanna make sure I have a backup set so those can charge and they can be available for me to work. Um, these are kind of like my casual, I'm around the house, they're easy to put in. I'm not worried about them as much. Um, they have this fun little case. And it has this thing, so you could, I guess, technically put it on a keychain if you wanted to. And they're small, right? They're these tiny little things. They go in my ears. And for me, whether I'm brushing my teeth or, and getting myself ready for the day um, and just needing a little bit of extra support or, um, you know, kind of wanting... I've found that, like, when I wear my earbud, AirPods specifically, my Apple AirPods, I tend to put them in on the noise cancellation feature, and I never actually put anything else on. I just kind of want to tune out the world <laughs> sometimes, and that's for a variety of reasons. But, like, for me, concentration can be really challenging. And so when I'm able to tune out the world, I tend to be able to focus more on what's happening in front of me. Um, so for me, I have a Spotify account. We use Spotify a lot for the studio. I have a personal account as well. I have a couple of playlists that are just tranquil, um, easy yoga kind of music, and I will put those on while I'm getting ready for the day. I will put them on um, during transition periods. I will put them on because I'm listening to a podcast. I will listen to an audiobook with them. Uh, when I'm out gardening, I sometimes listen to an audiobook and just do my thing in the garden. Um, and so for me, the wireless headset has been really, really powerful and potent when it comes to yoga practice. When this whole COVID happened this time last year, um, it was a real challenge for for me to find distraction free space. My kids were kind of everywhere. There was like just everything was kind of in a little bit of chaos and yet not, you know, like because we're all together. And um, and so for me, changing in, into a new routine, it was really helpful for me to have a set of wireless head phones that I could use to listen to a yoga class, even if I wasn't doing the same poses, even if I was kind of like doing my own thing, just listening to the class while I was on my mat was really, really helpful for me to actually just be able to show up more. So that was really, really helpful for me. Other people will have like those bigger headphones that kind of go around your ears, noise canceling. Um, and those are also great, whether you're listening to music or just Again, having the noise cancellation feature, which can be really, really nice. Um, and for me, when it comes to distraction, it seems as though sound can be both helpful and um, can be the challenge that we overcome. So I hope that's helpful for you. I want to let me think about other things. So when we're looking at distractions in our environment, another thing that's super important to do is to just sit down and become present to what's in your environment what are the ambient sounds which parts of your environment can you control the sound of can you relocate to another area of your house where there is less ambient noise uh, can you find a way to work with the environment around you so that you're able to just more intently be present to the practice uh, and that can look like a variety of different things. And that's going to change depending on your home situation and who you share your household with or if you are alone. Um, I find that even when I am in my house by myself, I still want those headphones to kind of make the world feel a little smaller, uh, to make the experience to feel a little bit more connected. And for me, also to feel like 
I am right there with the teacher. I notice that when I'm taking a yoga class, I always have my headset in. When I try to listen to it on a speaker, it just doesn't go as well. It just doesn't go as well. So wireless headphones for me have been absolutely transformative. Um, I will make sure to post a link to these if you'd like to try them. I think that they're wonderful. They come with a whole bunch of different sizes, so you can really get the ear size that works best for you. Uh, if you want more of a, a luxury item in your in your like a more expensive option, Apple AirPods. If you have Apple devices, are really really great um, for me. He, there's an absolute difference in sound quality. There's an absolute difference in um, you know range and and what they're able to do. But um, they're not for everybody and certainly if you're not on apple devices i don't even know if they work they might um what else do i want to offer you i think it would be really helpful to know if you're feeling distracted and if so what are the distractions that you're working with in your environment and um, we can kind of play around with what are the the things that we can do to to help work with that environment and make it feel a little bit more i don't know cozy supportive and kind so you can share in the comments below and then the other thing that I'll say is um, for me actually you know what tomorrow I think we'll talk about having like creating an environment for daily practice and and what that would include and what your home yoga space is like and um, we can kind of get into that a little bit more because I think it's helpful to see uh, all the imperfect places in which I practice all the imperfect places in which other people practice and how we really make it work um, just with what we've got, you know, whether we have some people that practice on their kitchen floor, which I think is awesome because it's the only place in the house where they, she can have like no dogs and no little kids and can be content and, and on her own. And um, I think, you know, when you can, you can get into the commitment and say, this is important and I'm going to do this, suddenly everything else becomes a lot more workable. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. Today, um, I hope this was helpful for you. I'd love to know what your distractions are and what you're working with and how we can support you to feel a little bit more distraction-free and a little bit more present on your mat. Have an awesome day.